Hello everybody, my name is Shortline614 and welcome back to episode 12 of Shortline Space Program, or welcome to, not welcome back. Uh, in this episode, uh, well in the last episode we tested out our nuclear tug and our Nerva tug and we brought it to Minmus with the beginnings of Challenger Station, our, uh, our Minmus refueling station. But uh, now that that's out and deployed, it's the time to test uh, another capability of this tug. Which is, of course, to send this home. And, of course, this isn't going to take a whole lot of Delta V. Once we released our payload, of course, we weren't carrying as much mass. And our Delta V upped, which is very, very nice. Uh, so it only will take around 1,000... Um, 100 uh, and uh, 60 Delta V to actually get home. And uh, if uh, I can see there, we have something like 1,500. Or 1,900. I can't see the, uh, the, the view isn't... Uh, the, the, the preview for the narration isn't particularly uh, that good. But uh, we did get ourselves onto an orbit that will be warping us back to Kerbin, falling towards the planet. And uh, we warp back, and we're coming in at about 3,000 meters a second. And uh, at this point, I was getting kind of concerned that, oh, we might not have enough fuel to actually get back and rendezvous with the station. Uh, at this point, I even considered it... Uh, reverting and uh, doing an arrow capture but uh I uh, didn't want to uh, try and risk uh, an arrow breaking with a payload such as this so we do manage to um, we do manage to uh, bleed off that uh that speed of course we were coming at 3,000 meters a second we need to get down to around uh, 2,000 um, 2,100, 2,200, something, 2,300, something along those lines. Uh, the orbit velocity for uh, above Kerbin. And, uh, of course, another, my other main goal is I want to try and get a rendezvous with Columbia Station, because that's, uh, that's where this is going, and then in our, our nuclear tug refueling module, or Nerva tug refueling module, the, uh, the part of the station that I always forget the exact name of it, um, well, uh, it has a bunch of fuel that we can use for, uh, use and send this thing out to, uh, deliver more modules in the future. And, uh, I do an inclination change because it'd come back at a slightly strange inclination. But at uh, that point, it's just a matter of, uh, setting a maneuver node. We don't have much, uh, Delta V left to burn to get, uh, some sort of encounter, only 80 meters a second. So uh, I just I just warp around and and uh, we we stop and we're still moving relatively quickly still 2,300 meters a second I guess and then I do that uh, burn to get an encounter in orbit's time and we're we're almost back to Columbia Station don't worry we're almost back to home base warp around one more time there it is. Only a couple of kilometers away, I get towards our closest approach, only four kilometers away. And I stop relative to it, and then I start to burn towards, uh, the station. And of course, uh, I had some trouble docking this, uh, to begin with, and we're gonna have some trouble docking, uh, before. But this is all, um, I think this is all 2.5 times speed, or 3 times speed. So, uh, it won't look like it on the on the video that you're watching, but on my end, this was kind of a pain. But I also recorded this, like, two weeks ago, so... <laughs> uh. Yeah, I need to get back to recording more of this, um... I'm, uh, starting to catch up on all that footage I, uh, I recorded. And of course, it's actually a longer episode. This is around 24 minutes, so, uh... I don't know how I'm gonna... fill up that amount of time, but, uh, we'll see. So I come in, I stop close to Columbia Station, I pause the game because I needed to go somewhere or something. Or, I don't know, that happens a lot. I need to get better at editing these videos. I, I always feel like there's a need, there's kind of a rush to put these out. So I'm like, oh Jesus, I haven't uploaded a new one of these in four days and I needed to yesterday. But I didn't get around doing it to it for, uh, for, uh, for, some, for some stupid reason. And I pause the game again, because interruptions, it's fine. Now, of course, if this were real time, it would take a lot longer. But uh, luckily, as I said, this is 2.5 times speed, so... Um, 
Yes. Yeah, Columbia Station no longer, of course, they no longer have those, um, those are refuelers attached to it. But, uh, in the next episode, we'll send out the, uh, the truss segments. We'll begin to launch the truss segments, which will eventually head out to, uh, to Minmus to form the backbone of Challenger Station. And I just switched to the station to make sure it's orientated in the right position. Uh, and, uh, I, I try and, try and slowly come in. And, uh, there's the Nerva Tug and the Nerva Tug fuel module. They're, uh, they're both very similar craft. Uh, it's almost like I based one off the other. Of course, there are some differences. Anyways, that's the Nerva Tug docked to the station. And, uh, well, I have to go ahead and shut off those engines, because I don't want them activated while I'm actually staying at this station. There's eight of them on there, of course. Of course, the, uh, the, the, the nuclear tugs that used the Nerva engine that NASA planned in the, in the late 60s, uh, they only used one engine. Or, or maybe three Nerva modules attached, I think, was one of the proposals for a, for a Mars mission. Because, you know, if you didn't know, Nerva was an actual thing, nuclear engine for rocket vehicle application. There's a great uh, old uh, NASA presentation on it that you can look up, about 23-minute video, and kind of pisses me off that they didn't continue that program, because it would have been really, really cool. And maybe we'll, we'll definitely see nuclear stuff in the future. Hey, maybe a nuclear-powered starship. That would be pretty cool. Oh, but a nuclear-powered starship would kind of have to stay in space and not be able to come back down because... Eh. Well, it's nuclear. Anyways, that's Columbia Station. And, uh... We demonstrated the ability of the Nerva Tug to deliver large payloads out to the, to the station to various points around the system, the Kerbin Mun Minmus system, and now it is time for the worst, the worst Minmus transfer of my entire life. So, my strategy, um, uh, my, uh, my standard basically, every station that I build at least needs to have two space tugs attached. That's because one can go out and do a mission delivering a payload somewhere, and if that gets stranded, the other one can go and fetch it. So, we have this, uh, this tug right here, which is, uh, it has a, that, uh, I think it's called the skipper, the, the upper stage engine. Um, I'm gonna keep those two mainsail engines, I, the block one, and that's the block two with the mainsail, I think is what I called it. Or it might be the other way around. It, it's, it's been a while since I last did one of these, but, um, of course, I also want to take some of those adapters with me, at least two of them, because Columbia's Challenger Station is gonna be about one two-thirds the size of um of columbia station it's gonna be really big uh but uh so i go ahead and i i undock i took we're taking that adapter with us uh and now it is time for the worst minmus transfer of my entire life so you ever just randomly forget how to do things and then you just fiddle around trying to you know re-remember how to do something. Well, this is exactly what happened. Uh, I tried to get a Minmus encounter. You know, something that I've done, uh, a lot. And, uh, I made the fatal mistake of not getting a proper inclination burn. Because if you remember, Minmus' orbit is relatively inclined. Uh, either I was oblivious to this fact, or I thought I could get it without actually adjusting my inclination. So I, I warp around, I leave the station, and I, I just go around with the maneuver nodes, trying to figure out, uh, well, well, uh, may, may, maybe this isn't working all that well, and I, I don't know, I went back to the tracking station, think that would help, and for some reason I thought it was an issue with the game not letting me get an encounter instead of, you know, me just not getting a proper encounter. So, uh, I do manage to get something, something that's close. Of course, what I could have done is I could have just burnt, all this has plenty of fuel, I could have just burnt, uh, get, put my apoapsis up on Mimit's orbit and then do corrections later on. But, uh, no, I was being incredibly stupid and just wanted to get a direct, trying to go to Minmus like it was the Mun, which is something that you probably should not do. At this point, I consider cheating in, uh, 
mech jeb to the game to plot it for me, and I'm like, nah. And I was like, you know, I still, at this point, I still thought it was a problem with the game. So I just relaunched the game. That was that cut right there, me exiting KSP and reloading. And then finally, I get, I think I, I eventually get an encounter. I said, like, oh, I can do a mid-course correction. Nah, that's not going to work. Ugh. And then I, I adjust my inclination slightly. And then, as like, there, I got an encounter. The problem is it's 28 days away instead of the normal 7 it takes to get out there. And I'm like, at this point, I just gave up. I'm like, yeah, I should, I, I'm just going to give up. I don't care. I'll take what I can get. Even if it's going to take 28 days, which is just ridiculous. Of course, I still need to get Kerbal Alarm Clock. That's another thing that I've neglected. I'll probably go and down... Now that I actually reminded myself, I'll probably go and download that after the, uh... After I'm done uploading this. I promise. <laughs> Expect, uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock to magically appear in, like, episode 13... No, episode, like, 14 or 15 of this. So, we start our very mediocre, <laughs> uh, transfer out to Minmus. Our 28-day transfer out to Minmus. Uh... Now, of course, it really doesn't matter in Kerbal Space Program. In real life, you would have to deal with things such as, you know, what if you had other missions going on? Uh, what about the fuel boil off? You know, because uh, fuel tends to do that in real life unless your tank is properly lined. Everyone says, oh, Falcon Heavy should go do these uh, these moon missions, but you have to remember that Falcon Heavy's, or Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy's upper stage is actually rather terrible. It, uh, can only survive about a day's worth of time before all the fuel boils off, so... Of course, SpaceX is working on the, the, the big funny starship, which is gonna be epic. Anyway, so, after my very poor Minmus transfer, I get into a very poor Min -min Minmus orbit. And, you know, I come in retrograde like normal, because I'm an idiot, and, uh, or just didn't pay attention, or just didn't care, or all, or, or all of those things, you never know. And then I, uh, I go ahead and I'm like, you know, I should probably get an encounter with Challenger Station, the exact, uh, the exact place where this is going. And, uh, I do manage to, uh, to change my, uh, I do manage to get an encounter. And of course, Minmus, as I said, Minmus is a fairly small moon. Uh, you don't need any, uh, you don't need any, uh, precision... Uh, precision maneuvering. Precision scheduled maneuvering. No. Uh, so I, I do get in within four kilometers of the station. And I start to burn towards it. And, uh, there it is. Challenger Station. It's very small. But in the future, it will expand to be, uh, a, a very large station. I still need to send up, um... As I'm recording this, I still need to send up the, uh, the actual, the lander, the fuel lander, and the, uh, and the, um, the refinery section. So, uh, I do manage to, uh, get a, I, I as you can see, I'm, I'm coming in here, uh, and I'm, right now this only has two docking ports, of course that other docking port is gonna, is gonna be where another tug that we're gonna send up is located. Because as I said, I want two tugs per station, so one can go do missions, and if the other gets stranded somewhere, runs out of fuel, can fetch the other. Not like that I'm going to have a... I don't think I'm gonna, that's going to be too big of a problem around Minmus, but... You know, just just in case. And of course, we're also going to bring up those adapters, which is, uh, which is really nice. So then we go ahead and we dock the two, and uh, so that's our first... Uh, I guess, real mission to Challenger Station, bringing this tug out here. And, uh, there it is. So, it has been 300 days since, uh, Jeb, Bill, and the other guy, uh, launched to Columbia Station on a skeleton mission to just kind of crew it and, uh, you know, make sure it doesn't fall apart. But it has been 300 days, it has been a year... And uh, now it's time to send up the next crew, a replacement crew consisting of Val, Bob, and Bobford, Bedford, Bedford, Illinois. I don't know. Uh, as I said, my uh, my editing software doesn't have the best um, uh, preview for the uh, 
for the video narration, so I can't actually make out those words too well. <laughs> so, of course, we are launching our, our not our full-up crew vehicle, our crewed space plane, which will be coming later, just our, just our, our uh, space construction vehicle-derived crew capsule, which I've, it has an acronym that I forgot what it stood for. But it just launches on a normal Chesapeake, and of course, we're also going to send up that, we're not just sending up the uh, crew, we're sending up uh, that other tug, which we will eventually send out to Minmus as well. Uh, but that's in a future episode, probably in the next one, or the one after that, who really knows. But you know, it's it's just kind of a standard thing, you just a uh, standard rendezvous and docking, but this is actually, I think, the first crew mission I've done in an episode. The first crew actually came up on a live stream until I decided that this series would probably be better off being video only, because, uh, what if you don't want to watch a live stream? There's going to be a lot of continuity errors, I guess. Uh so we do manage to get a rather nice encounter, and uh, obviously warp over to this. Uh, of course, uh, Soyuz in real life can uh, go to the space station from uh, from launch to the station in something like four hours. I only hope that uh, Dragon will be able to, and Starliner will be able to do that in the future. Of course, Soyuz has been flying for 50 years, and Dragon crew only has only flown one crew mission so far, so... It's all about the maturity of the technology. Something, another thing that we really don't really have to worry about in Kerbal Space Program. <laughs> uh. You know, un unless you're, you know, kind of into self-limiting. I, I, I do some self-limiting. I know some people are ridiculous about it, who are like, Oh, we, we gotta do all the basic crew missions first before we go and build a station. We have to build a station before we go out to the mud. We have to do everything logically like a real space program. And then there are some people who are like, you know, I just loaded up the new save. I want to build, I want to send a one-way mission to Duna. Screw it. <laughs> uh. Hey, however you play this game, play it how you like. So we're obviously going to dock to the uh, that crew and docking segment right there. And there's the other uh, crew transfer vehicle, which brought up the, uh, I guess, Expedition 1. This is Expedition 2 right here. And we're going to bring that down after this. Now, of course, this is just the, the skeleton crew for the station. The station that's... The crew that's there to actually properly maintain the station. You know, keep it going and whatnot. Of course, in the future, we'll send up our, uh, our crew transfer vehicle, our space plane. And that will come up here carrying six Kerbals each. And then they'll get the space bus out to wherever they need to go. But that's, that's still far in the future. And, uh, there we go. Kind of a poor docking, but I did manage to get it. And, uh, there we go. We, uh, now there are six Kerbals on this station. Of course, the station, uh, in the crew segment has the capacity for, I think, 16 Kerbals. And as I said, we can add to that as we need be, but I don't really foresee the, uh, more than 16 Kerbals being really needed on this at a time. Of course, I do, uh, I do eventually want to set up, once I get Challenger Station done, I do want to set up a, kind of a small Minmus base. As I said in the, uh, the Ice Cream Highlands, that area. Uh, but of course we have the, uh, the Chesapeake Upper Stage Tug, which, uh, this is eventually going to be going out to Minmus, uh, as well. Just by itself, not really carrying anything else. Uh... But we still need to dock it to the station, I decided. Well, I'm gonna dock it right next to the, uh... The, uh, the Block 2 tugs, I guess. I still can't remember which one's Block 1 and Block 2. They, they have different engines. One of them has the skipper, I think it's called, and the other has the mainsail. Other than that, they're identical. <laughs> but, uh, we go ahead and something that I've done a million times, something that you've seen a million times, I should really start cutting these out. But, uh... Uh, I did manage to dock it to there, which is fairly nice. And, uh, there we go. And then I, this is at the point where I'd still done the practice of disabling all my tugs for some odd reason. And, uh, there we go. We, uh, we docked, everything is docked, and now it's time to send the crew home. Well... Expedition 1 home. Well, first we have to transfer uh, the crew into Expedition 2 crew into the station and then transfer Expedition 1 crew back to the uh, to their uh, to their return vehicle. 
And uh, there we go. There's a uh, there's a station with two crew attached, two crew spacecraft attached to it. Now, of course, uh, in Kerbal Space Program, you really don't have to worry about much like supply, unless you know, unless you know you uh, you install those mods where you have to deal with supply and send up supply craft. But uh, so they're going to stay on the station for a few days. They're going to stay on the station together for about twelve days. Uh, so it's it's or ten or five days. Yeah, 10 days. So now we're at day 307 because this we sent this up on the 7th day of this save game. <laughs> and uh, now it is time for them to leave. It's time for them to leave. Uh, and uh, there we go. Of course, at this point I was kind of concerned, oh, are we going to hit the solar panels? Are we going to hit the hit the station? We haven't hit the station yet. We haven't hit the station like Progress hit Mir that one time and knocked off a couple of solar panels. <laughs> uh. And uh, then, right there, I fucked up and accidentally pressed stage staging, leaving these guys in an orbit, <laughs> which I did not want. Uh, that did not intersect the atmosphere at all. So, luckily, uh, my habitual quick saving comes in handy. So, uh, these guys can actually go ahead and make a safe return. <laughs> and, of course, uh, these guys aren't going to be flying up in space for a while. I, I kind of want to, I want to rotate out crews, uh, like, like I, are, like, uh, they do in real life. So I just don't keep launching the same crew. These guys are probably going to go, go up on, um, I don't know, probably... I might send Jeb out to the Mun base, who knows. Or my, maybe maybe Jeb will be the man who uh, permanently staffs the... Uh... <laughs> who knows, maybe they'll go to Challenger Station, maybe they'll go to the yet-to-be-named Minmus base, small Minmus base. Maybe they'll be the ones faring crew back and forth between those stations in the space bus. Who really knows? <laughs> Anyways, uh... The mono we're doing our deorbit burn right now. I wanted to try and get over the KSC, but that really did not end up happening. Um, but uh, just continuing to burn my um, that module, and uh, we got the altitude which we wanted. So this is going to stay attached for a little while longer before it detaches and burns up in the fiery atmosphere below. And, uh, just, just the beautiful craft coming back down. Uh, I pause the game slightly, and then I come back. And then I deploy the, uh, I deploy the, uh, the service module, I guess. And then the music cuts out abruptly, and we're in the atmosphere, and of course this is a pod, so I have no worries about this, uh, this coming back. And of course the, uh, the atmosphere, the heat shield is to their backs, which, uh, I know that how that's how that works in real life when it comes to pods, but uh, I I would be kind of scared. <laughs> I would be scared during a re-entry. Then the streams of plasma go over the pod, and it's going to be interesting to see how our space plane works. And then we go ahead and we jettison the heat shield and whatnot, and we deploy the parachutes. And uh, I might as well do my outro while these guys come back. So uh, thank you everyone for watching. Uh, please. Like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you think. Uh, I do live streams on YouTube and Twitch uh, fairly often. Uh, not as much as before, though. Join the Discord server uh, to talk to me about random stuff. And I guess get future updates on this uh, if you're particularly interested in this. Uh, my name is Neutralion614, and as ex the crew of Expedition 1 finally returns home, awaiting their next mission in the future, which uh, is yet to be determined. I hope you've been enjoying the series so far, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, everybody.